Hi everyone, welcome to Naresh Technologies. This is Srinivas. Today we are going to start data structures using C language or data structures through C language. So, first of all, so what is this data structures through C language means what? So, remember a data structures is not a language. Uh, simply a data structures is the concept of set of algorithms, set of algorithms used to structure the information. It is not a programming language like C, C++, Java or .NET. So, these are just a set of algorithms. We are implementing these algorithms using any programming language. For example, in C or C++ languages, we have to write the code or we have to write the logic data structure algorithms. So, but in Java language right or in a .NET language, so they have given a predefined implementations to all these algorithms called collections framework. But now here, so we are developing the logic how to implement an algorithm right. So, what is a data structure means? to structure the information while storing. We know the importance of a data storage for every application and nowadays. So, why Hadoop data science and all ruling the market? So, what is the reason behind that means all these are data processing tools. In early days right in 1960s only right uh, some of the scientists identify whatever what is the importance of a data right so, in a future. So, by that time, so they were introduced one very a good language that is a python language that is a python language to process the information much faster. But by that time the people so does not know. So, what is the importance of right data analysis and all nowadays right. So, whenever they understood the importance of data storing and data processing again a python so moving to the limelight. So, that was right. So, very uh, important uh, programming language. So, this is all about uh, just analysis of uh, data. So, when you will analyze the data means after you storage. Now, here our discussion is a uh, data structures. Data structures means while storing the information. So, what are the algorithms we should follow? If you follow those algorithms, what will happen? How effectively we are storing the information? All these are comes under data structures algorithm, right? So here, data structures, data structures through C language, data structures through C language. So we are implementing algorithms using the syntax of a C language, the syntax. So, to structure the data n number of algorithms were proposed, n number of algorithms. All these algorithms are called abstract data types, abstract data types. Sir, what is abstract data type? Very simple a set of rules algorithm is nothing but set of rules right. So, tell me some of the examples of data structure algorithms right. So, generally in every programming language to structure the information we use one a data structure concept and of course, that does not follow any algorithm, but that is also one way of effect of storing the information effectively. So, what is that example array? What is that example? Array. Using arrays, we can store the information effectively. How? So, that we will see. And some more examples, for example, stack queues, queues, linked lists, linked list, trees, trees, graphs, graphs. So, all these are so comes under algorithms and so many are there. 
sorting techniques, searching techniques, all these are comes under algorithms, right. So, now we will see, so one by one and here algorithms are divided into two types, nothing but data structures are divided into two types. So, what are the types? See, data structure algorithms, algorithms divided into two types. So, what are the two types means? First one is a linear data structures, second one is a non-linear data structure. Sir, what are linear data structures and what are non-linear data structures? A linear data structures means the arrangement of elements are in a sequential format. So, one is connected to only one element, right? So, that is such type of elements algorithms are called arrays, stacks, queues, linked lists. All these are comes under linear data structures because in these uh, data structures one element is connected to another element in a linear form. Non-linear form means uh, one element is connected to n number of elements the best example trees and graphs, trees and graphs these are non-linear data structures and these are linear data structures, okay. So, first of all we will see a simple data structure arrays, right array. So, we know that what is the array and why they introduce the concept of array, why? right simple thing simple thing it holds more than one element it holds more than one element next one it holds only homogeneous elements nothing but same type of elements and next one this is index based so accessing become faster processing the elements much faster in arrays, right. And it is also called a derived data type, derived data type and next one it does not follow any algorithm, it does not follow any algorithm. So, this is a simple data structure they introduced in every programming language algorithm ok. How to access the elements effectively from an array? For example, if you declare an array int arr, int arr either you declare so like this error of 5, some of the values, some of the values we are storing right all these elements get memory allocation all these elements and we are accessing using index number 10 20 30 40 50 the base address just consider 2046 2048 2050 2052 2054 just consider integer occupies a 2 bytes memory we know that array is an internal pointer variable, it holds the base address of the memory block. The base address ARR is holding the base address of the block is a 2046, it holds the base address of the block it holds. Next one, how to access the elements? Simply if you access ARR of 3, ARR of 3 then how it will execute? So, directly it will give the value ARR of 3 value is a 40. Simply it is giving, but internally what is happening means internally it uses the concept of a concept of a pointers ARR plus 3. Sir, pointer arithmetic how it will increase? Very simple it will be increased by the size of integer every time, the size of integer. Of course, exactly not we are writing like this because so whenever we are increasing the ordinary variable, 
that will be increased by 1 integer variable. But whenever we increase a pointer variable using modify operator, that will be pointing to the next memory location in the array. That will be pointing to next memory location in the array, right? See. So now pointer ARR value is 2046 plus 3 into size of integer is a 2 bytes. Now again pointer 2046 plus 6 is a pointer to 2052. What is pointer to 2052? The value which is inside the location. So, what is that value? 40. 40. If you are new to the programming, we are accessing the array elements with the help of index number. But once you are perfect in a pointers concept, right, you should understand what is the internal concept, right, how it is providing the information effectively. So, with the help of some of the formulas, we can access the information of every array much faster, of course, using index number. But in the background of every index number, so there is a concept of a pointers and pointer arithmetic concept. So many concepts we will use. Okay. So, this is right, what is the advantage of array when compared with the ordinary primitive data? If it is a primitive variable, if you declare two variables. If you declare two variables int a equals to 10 and int b equals to 20 consider a gets memory allocation at some location and b gets memory allocation at another location at another location. So, we cannot access the information effectively using programs. So, whenever we are declaring two variables all these variables get memory allocation in two different locations. So, in such kind of situation, right, if you want to access the information effectively, that is not possible because these are random memory locations. We cannot use any equations or any expressions to access the information so faster. So, this is the advantage of arrays instead of using right variables. And one more important thing using arrays, right, we can store n number of elements with the help of a single variable. Whereas, if you go for ordinary variables, for example, if you want to store write some mobile numbers, 100 mobile numbers, 100 variables you have to declare, right. For example, 100 students maths marks, again 100 variables you have to declare. So, working with 100 variables either declaring, right or assigning, processing, anything is much complex in a programming. So, that is why it is better to use arrays instead of using primitive data types. This is one type of a data structure, of course, it does not follow any algorithm, but using arrays we can store the information effectively and we can process the information effectively. So, right. So, now, so we are using right some of the algorithm based data structures right to store the information nothing but to structure the data right see. So, one important thing you should understand that right if you want to implement all the algorithms stack algorithm, Q algorithm, linked list trees and graphs right using any programming language. For example, here we are using C language. You should be perfect in some of the areas of a C language. So, what are the areas? So, first one, first one functions we should understand functions and one more thing a recursive function also. Second one arrays arrays, third one structures, structures, fourth one pointers and the last one is a dynamic memory allocation. These five concepts are very, very important, right, that you should know to learn a data structure algorithms using a C language. Because if you want to implement any algorithm into code to store the information in a structural format, we are following all these concepts logic, right? Functions, arrays, structures, pointers, dynamic memory allocation, right? Hope all of you people good at all these concepts of a C language, right? If you are not perfect, 
just go through write all the previous videos in a C language. So, there already we discussed about all these concepts perfectly ok. Right. So, in the next session we will start right how to implement a stack algorithm right using a static memory allocation and using dynamic memory allocation right. So, hope you will enjoy this video. For more videos please subscribe to Nareshati channel. Thank you.